Tokyo is the most futuristic city in the world. A city that is always innovating and is known for being the most technologically advanced city ever. It's like we're in a different planet. From the unique culture and incredible worth ethic of the Japanese people to all of the products that are made here that we use every day. And the fact that the moment you arrive in this city, this place makes you feel like you're a character in a video game. Konnichiwa from Tokyo. You know, I've been here for the past week and I keep finding myself saying how this city truly makes you feel like you're living in the future. Even this area that we're in right now is called Akihabara and just has all these crazy lights, billboards, arcades, and just makes you feel like you're living in a video game. Speaking of video games, that's exactly where we're heading right now. Also joining me on this Tokyo adventure, we are here with Peace. Peace has been helping me produce these YouTube videos for the past two years and lives here in Tokyo. Peace, is Akihabara your favorite district? I'll say it's one of my top five favorite districts. 100%. Yeah, this area truly makes you feel like you teleported to a different planet. All right, let's play some video games now. The arcades here in Akihabara are unparalleled, with some of them even being nine stories high. But now this next thing is another reason why Tokyo is like living in a video game. So guys, we just made it here to the Unicorn Gungam statue. And this is a life-size Transformer robot. This thing's gotta be at least eight stories tall. And we learned that people come out here to pray to the Transformer for good luck with video games and to robots and technology. So don't mind if I do. AI, I promise to respect you, but please do not take my job. I love making YouTube videos way too much. Okay. All right, we can go now. What in the world? So the giant life-size transformer is moving. You think I could take him? Not, not a chance. Coming here to Japan, I really have so much nostalgia. Right behind me, there is a Nintendo store. And then across the hall from it, you have a Pokemon store. That's a pretty big Mewtwo. I'm getting a Bulbasaur. store. I feel like that's such a cool souvenir, getting a Pokemon. In Japan. This place just makes you feel like a little kid again. I feel like it's impossible to not smile being in Japan. Yahoo! So all the games that we grew up with and know and love, most of them are actually from here in Japan. From Nintendo to Pokemon, all the game consoles, PlayStation, even Sega, is all from here in Japan. So Peace, I know that Nintendo and all these games have had a huge role in the Japanese economy and technology. So do you know a little bit about the history of Nintendo and how it all even started? Uh, Nintendo actually started in, back in 1889. Originally, they were a card manufacturer for playing cards called Hanafuda, which is a Japanese version of playing cards. They've been revolutionizing game consoles since day one. Super Nintendo, everyone loves Super Nintendo, Nintendo 64. Then there was a Wii, impossible to buy back in then. Now we got the Switch. Now we got the Switch. You better focus up now, because I think, I, I think Brett's kicking your butt. Now next up, we are about to go to a cafe that is one of the most innovative I have ever seen. They also have the best customer service. Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. <laughs> it's okay to sit down? Uh, they have a here? Uh, yes, my friend's here. It's okay? Uh, okay. Okay, okay. All right, arigato. Thank you. Enjoy your time. Thank you. So this is Dawn Robot Cafe, which is controlled and operated by robots. And what is so innovative about this place is that the robots are controlled by humans that have disabilities and aren't able to walk. So they're able to be in a remote location, control the robots, be able to wave, and even serve our coffees and food. It's really cool that here in Japan they're giving career opportunities to individuals that maybe can't do a job like this. And they are still hardworking, definitely up to the Japanese standard. Our service is here. Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. <laughs> What is your name? Ah, uh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Arigato. Thank you. How long have you been working here? Uh, about one year and half month. How do you like it? I enjoy this one. Yeah. Arigato gozaimasu. Arigato gozaimashita. Oh. Yeah. 
Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. And the food here is delicious. I went with the sushi cake since unfortunately they didn't have any mega bites on the menu. I get it. I get it. That was funny. Got it. So if you guys saw my previous $100 in Japan video, we did come here to this place called Kura. And after trying out a bunch of different places here in Japan for sushi, this one is by far my favorite. For the price and the quality of the sushi, it's just on a different level. They have the sushi coming on this conveyor belt where you can use this iPad to order whatever you want and it comes out within seconds on a conveyor belt. New York, we gotta get this with pizza where you can order whatever slice you want, comes out on a conveyor belt, I'd be the number one customer. <laughs> <laughs> now, when you arrive here to Japan, the first thing that you'll notice is how polite and respectful everyone is. Whether you're on the escalator and everyone is on the left side, or when you're boarding the metro, everyone is perfectly in single file line. In New York City, where I'm from, everyone bombards onto the metro like it's Black Friday at Walmart. But Peace was just telling me about how when you're growing up here in Japan, they have a class to teach you how to be polite and kind to one another. So back when I was in elementary school, we had this class called Dotoku, which means moral, and we learn how to be kind, how to be nice to everyone, being respectful to elders, and we even clean out our own school so I think that's one of the wait you you guys had to clean your own school yeah like you don't have janitors you guys had to do it we have to clean our own school that is crazy and peace was also even saying how if someone is one year older than you you have to call them mister out of respect so peace yes I feel like this this is why you're such a nice guy you were just raised in this fashion that it all makes perfect sense now I mean my name <laughs> is peace too so I think that's another reason why too. welcome to paradise now, Japan has always been influential in the tech space, but recently, the nation has announced itself as a force in the art world as well, as young professionals there are making waves in the world of art investments. And I just wanted to say that hundreds of my loyal subscribers were ahead of the curve on this trend, thanks to today's sponsor of Masterworks. Masterworks gives you the chance to invest in contemporary art from legends like Warhol, Banksy, and even Monet. They're even offering a work titled Infinity Net by Japan's most famous living artist, excuse me if I'm saying this wrong, Yayoi Kusama. Now, I am not an art expert, but public auction info shows that similar works to their Kusama offering have appreciated in value over 21% from 2006 to 2022. And Masterworks is giving you the chance to get your hands on it as over 800,000 people from all over the globe have signed up so far, and offerings have sold out within minutes. And you guys have the chance to skip the wait list and start your art collection today by just clicking the link in the description down below. If I could describe Japan in one word, it would be convenience. I have never seen so many convenience stores and so many vending machines. This spot that we're at right now, you can get a drink, even a sandwich, and even ice cream. You could go on a full on date here. They even have an area to wash your hands as well as a table to chow down. Definitely the best vending machine ice cream I've ever had. Mmm, matcha. They even have a popcorn vending machine, a vending machine that gives you a box to tell you your fortune, a vending machine with some very unique beverages. You even have a, a beetle, some canned bread. I think those are baseballs. What the heck? They also even have a crepe vending machine and then this is the mystery vending machine. All right, so we're gonna give this mystery vending machine a try. Peace, have you ever seen anyone win anything good? No. <laughs> <laughs> it says that you can win a Nintendo Switch, a camera, headphones, a watch. Let's see what we get. Gonna put in about $7. That's how much it is. I've been having good luck here in Akihabara. You guys remember from my last video, I turned $7 into $315 in Pachinko. So let's see what we got here. Do you like press a button? Yeah, random button. Oh, you press random a random button? button? Yeah. Oh my gosh. All right. The pressure. Feeling lucky. How do you say good luck in Japanese? Kaunwo. Kaunwo. Oh, kind of hefty. What is it? What in the world? I think it's a blanket. An anime blanket? Yeah, yeah anime blanket. blanket. Now I got my girlfriend's souvenir for seven bucks. Look at that. <laughs> hey, no, she, doesn't she watch these videos? Yeah. And in addition to convenience, Japan is also known for its quality, where even the convenience stores like 7-Eleven actually have delicious high quality food. Peace, you know back in America, 
we do not really eat at 7-Elevens. Yeah. Do you, do you eat at 7-Elevens here? In the States, no, but in Japan, definitely. Almost daily, to be honest. Like you get a lunch or a dinner? I, get, I even get my coffee here. Tonight's dinner, good old faithful 7-Eleven. We got the egg, tomato sauce, and cheese. They even have sushi here. I would not trust the sushi at a 7-Eleven in America. How's the 7-Eleven sushi here? It's not bad. Ooh, we got some delicious rice bowls. They even have your healthy options. We got some salads, got spinaches. They really got everything in here. 7-Elevens in Japan are like Whole Foods in America. Exactly. So we went with smoothies where it comes in the frozen fruits in the cup and then you put it in this blender and now we have these delicious smoothies. Come Cheers. Come by. Wow, it's a good smoothie. And Valid. for the price, this is incredible. Two bucks for a smoothie from 7-Eleven, and it's good. Not only is Japan the most innovative when it comes to convenience and video games, but they are now one of the first ever to have video billboards in three dimensions. Guys, check this out. They have a 3D billboard. It honestly looks like that cop kitty is gonna just jump off the screen on us. Now, the Japanese wouldn't make an art museum filled with traditional paintings and sculptures for you to look at. No, no, no. They're going to make you feel a part of the art. So this entire experience you do barefoot. So the first step you walk through this sanitizing area. It does smell a little bit like butter popcorn though still. Chris got some stinky feet. Bam! I think we just entered a different multiverse. What? Luckily Peace forgot to wear his skirt today. For all the ladies out there, be aware. It is a lot of mirrors going on. What's nice about coming here to this Team Labs exhibit is that there is no time limit. Once you have your slotted time, you can stay in here as long as you want. So, the boys have been shooting in here for the past hour. I feel like we still have not gotten bored of this. There's so many unique angles and so many fun things to do with photo and video. It makes for a must do in Japan. I don't know how they do it here in Tokyo. Since I have been to a lot of these immersive art exhibits before, but this one is by far the most immersive. Like right now, we are literally knee deep in water trekking through a fake light koi pond. This is crazy. It honestly feels like I'm a kid again because you know when you eat that bowl of Fruit Loops and then the milk is all rainbow-like? That's what this feels like. Or Fruity Pebbles. Yeah, yeah that, was, that was so funny, Chris. Great, great joke, man, great joke. Awesome, dude. 10 out of 10. For this last exhibit, it's these upside down flowers that are on strings that just keep going up and down. The, all the mirrors everywhere. It's crazy just trying to crawl through this place. <laughs> wow. Another product that Japan has been super innovative in and a product that we use every single day of our lives is the toilet. Look, they even have one for your pet hamster. Is that what that's for? Probably not, <laughs> but how cool would that be? You of course have your remote controller to adjust all the settings from how fast you want the water to come up for the bidet. And this one even has a sink. Whoa, it's even got heated seats. This feels pretty nice, not gonna lie. <laughs> all right, I think that's enough of the shitty content. Off to the next place. So besides toilets, Japan is also famous for their bullet trains. These things can go up to 375 miles per hour and unlike America, are always on time with the longest delay it's ever had being only 12 seconds. We took one from Tokyo to Kyoto, which will be in my next video, but it truly made for an incredible way to see this country. So guys, we're here with my friend Hadrian, who is from America, but moved here to Japan to be in the robotics industry. So Hadrian, what made you want to move to Japan? So I would say Japan is like world renowned for the robotics and technology in general. When you think of robotics, most people think of Japan. So when it came to me wanting to go to school and find jobs, I thought Japan was, you know, the, the best place to do it. It's one of the most convenient countries and that has to do a big part because of the technology here is very futuristic, very easy for people. Coming here as a person who never spoke a word of Japanese, it was very an easy transition in my opinion um, because of the technology. And also, my next question for you, as an American, 
I feel like we look lazy compared to the work <laughs> ethic here in Japan. Yeah. Like even Peace over here wakes up at four in the morning every day, does his workout and gets straight to work by like 5 a.m. Can you concur? That's true <laughs> that the Japanese, the work ethic is just the highest level. It's definitely the highest work ethic I've ever seen in my life. I think the first way you can tell that the work <laughs> ethic here is so high is everyone on the train is sleeping. <laughs> Everyone. It, it's so that's, easy for that's people very to true. Sleep here. You see people working until 10 o'clock at night. It doesn't matter, you know, like what they do, it's how hard they work. So they might not be the smartest, but they're definitely the hardest working. For them, it makes them proud, a proud country to be hard workers and do as much as they can. After exploring the city of Tokyo for a week, I've came to realize everything the Japanese do, they do it at the highest caliber. From convenience stores, bullet trains, video games, robotics, to even toilets. Everything the Japanese make, they are always innovating. This trip has been eye-opening to me and made me realize how so many products we use on a daily basis are produced here in Japan. This city truly is the closest thing to traveling to a different planet and unlike any other place in the world. Until next week, let's get out and get busy in the next one.